Mailbag time again. Now one of these things looks like it's going to be an interesting little thing to play around with. So we might be doing some in-depth stuff using an EEPROM programmer. We'll see how we go. Let's get stuck into it. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's a package inside a package, because that makes total sense. Oh, no, there's two packages in here. We have these. Did it get opened or something? Strange. It's got like an open envelope inside the big envelope. It's a bit of a new one on me. So these are a bunch of crystals, quite large ones. 1.63840 megahertz. And these have got three legs because you've got the actual crystals and you've got a grounding leg as well. Anyway, this is for my Datron 1082 multimeter. It's currently got a different crystal in there, which is based on a 60 hertz line frequency. And I need to change that to a crystal for a 50 hertz line frequency. Anyway, I got a pack of five because that's how I've managed to find them. I need one, but yeah. Mm. This one here, which appears to be another eBay item because it's in an eBay bag. Hmm. Ah, nice. It's a original HP grabber kit. Or part of a grabber kit. It's like a logic analyzer thing. Now, I do actually pick up some grabbers individually, but these are all little probes that go with them. So you hook these up to the grabbers and they've got these little ground pins as well. Alright, so original HP. And these are like cheap on connectors. He pushes these on the grabbers, which I've already got. I picked them up the other day. They've already arrived, and so there's a ground pin here as well, which is also like a DuPont thing, I suppose. But you have to, if you want a ground pin, you can put one in there. So these are obviously coaxial wires as well. In fact, you can see from the texture of the coaxial. Well, it could be twisted actually, I'm not sure. It might be twisted actually, you can just see, just kind of see a twist in it. So it could be a twisted pair in each one. And there's the head for it, which is basically a 0.1 inch header. These, I think, are those plugged in? This is part of a project I'm going to be working on. I'm going to be making a device for my scope, which is a MSO scope, and I'll be doing that soon. You may even see it before this video, I'm not quite sure. I'm waiting for more parts to turn up. Another eBay looking one. And here is another kit, just like the one I showed you just now, but this one's a bit more complete. Oh, I do plug in maybe. There's a, there's a connector there. It's like an extra one. I do plug in. So, yes, there's a probe. This one's actually got the grabbers on there. Any earth leads in there? No, they're all just the standards. Okay, so, yeah, there's the grabbers in place. This one actually came with the grabbers on it. High quality grabbers, HP. Really nice, they feel really strong. I've got loads of those now. I've got a whole bunch of grabbers. I've got these grabbers. I've got two lots of probe cables. Excellent. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon if you're first time here. And if you do like mailbag videos or anything else that I make, electronic repair, whatever, click the like button. Like it says here, click like. Make sure you do that. Helps the channel out. Helps it grow, helps YouTube see it, helps YouTube push it to other people. So these are some instrument panel things for cars. I've got two different ones, I think. Yeah, different sizes. I wasn't sure which size I needed, so I got both. So these are just USB ports. So they take 12 volts in, so it's a little 5 volt regulator or something in there, or maybe a switch mode thing or something. You just put those into those spare switch panels you have in cars. Right, so these ones are supposedly for Toyotas. They say for Toyota on them. So we'll see. I mean, it depends on what's fit, but one of these will fit, hopefully. It means I can put a high current USB port on the car for running the phone and charging the phone. Instead of having a cigarette like a socket plugged in sort of thing, you know those adapters which just make wires and mess and just it's a clutter. But put one of these in, then that's that problem solved. So I sort of pop the cover off one of these and here you go, that's what it looks like. It's actually got an LED display on it. So it's just DC with a big space with a V on it. This little display will actually show up and it shows you the voltage of the power supply going to it. So that's what that's for. Can I push this out? Yes I can. Here we go, even better. Let's have a close look at this thing. Both of these switches are the same, or both of these modules are the same, it's just a different face here. What chipset? Can you see that? I can't. Can't quite see what it says. Anyway. And there's 
the other side. So yeah, obviously some kind of little buck converter. We'll see how it goes, I suppose. Brown caps, who knows? Some cheapish thing, I imagine. And there's another chip on the back of that as well. That's obviously for the display. Yeah, nice little compact modules. Put this thing back together again. So you can see through there, can you? Can you see that? It's transparent. Kind of see it. And we'll put it back on the right way up. That's always nice. So I'm guessing dig digits will be down the bottom. So that should be like that. Back together. Alright, so I've plugged up my power supply. Let's uh, turn it on. Here we go. Hmm, 11.7, that's actually not particularly accurate. <laughs> I'm putting 12 volts in. 13? 14? Saying 13.8. So, yeah, accuracy is not great. If I do 10 volts, it's dropping out there. So, 11 volts like, is like the minimum. It's, got, it's flickering, is that like a warning? Well, that's 7 volts, it will work down there. It's flickering digits, interesting. It's like a design to do that. Accuracy, not the best. So 12 volts, we're getting 11.8. Hmm. Let's see what the other one's like. And that one's saying 12.1, which is slightly better. 15 volts, yeah. It's not too bad. 10 volts, 10.1. So this one's reading slightly closer, but reading higher. But that's alright, I suppose. Why do you think the other one's got a nicer display? What do you think? This one's looking a bit grainy because of the textured surface on the front. This one's looking a bit more translucent, so it's a bit more forgiving. And this one actually looks marginally better. It's not much in it though. Anyway, they work okay. At least the displays work. Let's do another test. I haven't actually used this thing yet. USB load tester. I'm waiting for an opportunity. Let's plug this in. So it says it's doing it at 5 volts. I did actually do this test once already, but I messed it up. So I'm re-recording this. The reason being is I have my power supply limited too much and this is actually dropping out my power supply, not this thing. So I actually had it set half an amp and that wasn't really enough. Actually, let's wind this up some more. Let's go two amps. Okay, so let's try this thing out and see how it can handle it. Supply is on, one amp. Doing fine, 5.11 volts. One and a half amps, still fine. Two amps, still fine. 2.1, that's its rating, 2.1 amps. Now it's also said 4.5 amps max, I think it's also said, there we go, collapsed. So that's collapsed there at 2.6 amps, basically. This is where it collapses, which is fine because it's rated for 2.1. So um, this thing's fine, it can handle it just just fine. It's fine. Good job. Links down below for this. Just check the fuse in these power wires. They've got 10 amp fuses in them. I think that's a bit excessive. So thanks to my Patreon supporters and everyone else that helps to support the channel, such as memberships and you know, give me a thumbs up. That helps the channel. Commenting down below helps the channel. All those things. Sharing a video helps the channel. That helps a lot actually. Sharing the video. So if you want to help my channel progress more, share it. Share videos. All right. These are just some UFL connectors. I've got a bunch of these, I think I might need them. And the project I was actually doing now is kind of finished. I'll go back on it, so... <laughs> don't need them now, but I'll probably need them for something one day. There's extension cables, I think. No, it's UFL to UFL, so it's just a... plain UFL to UFL. I don't know what those, 15 centimeters long, probably? These bags don't like cutting. Very resistant to cuts. Ah, oh, right, these are indeed fuses. 2.5 amp, the ratio, I can see that on there. I thought it would be handy, I mean 2.5 amps. Alright, let's see what we get. 0.15 ohms. The resistance is 0.12. Oh, no, listen to that. 0.1, 0.0, no, no, it's still going. 0 0.06. 0 0.06, and 0 0.06. We check. Oh, I'm getting 0 0.06 there as well now. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so basically no resistance. Just a fuse then, isn't it? Obviously there'll be links for these things down below, for these items I've shown you. I can, like these UFLs, these fuses, these USB outputs. 
There'll be legs for those. Right, last thing for today, and I believe I know what's in here already, then I can get into it. Oh, there's a box in there. Curious. Mm. Wow, look at this lot. <laughs> so this is from the guy which I lent the EPROM programmer to recently, which I did in another mailbag. So he's got some spare devices, which is obviously gifted to me as well. On-time programmable devices. Also click like and subscribe. This is the A27C256R. It's a one-time programmable devices. Oh, there's an EEPROM there. More EEPROMs. Which are 27C128, 128, 128. I guess he's a bit of the same. That's a 64, that one. And this one is a 2 yeah, it's 128 as well. So he had a bunch of spare parts, he's given me bits and pieces. Yes, it's been quite generous actually. So what this is going to be about is this device here. This is a memory module from Piece Test Gear. It's a DS1225Y as you can see. I believe it's from 1988, 32nd week. That's what it appears to be. So it's pretty old and he's hoping that it's still got some data on it. I don't know if there will be or not. See so it's got this the footprint in here and it has a chip in there which is an actual memory chip I'm guessing. So these contain a battery and the battery may or may not still be alive really don't know but he wants me to try and read this device see if there's anything on it. So I'm going to use my Batronics EEPROM programmer for this well it's not just EEPROMs it does other stuff as well but uh, this is pin 1 marking so I'll go upwards open those up so that should be sitting like that and put that in like so Plug this to the computer and see if we can read it. Okay, so this is the EEPROM programmer software, or the programmer software, so I'll show the connector programmer. Yep, it's there, so the BX32 is connected. I've selected the device here, which should be the correct one. There's a few different variants of this chip, so I'm not completely sure about which one it should be. Non-volatile RAM, Dallas, 1225, DIP28, and we've got all these different variants, which I'm puzzled by so I've just like grabbed a random one and just we'll see if that works I don't know we'll see if I can read it read chip data into hex editor okay here we go well there's something in there there does appear to be some data it has like an FF and 00, zero pattern as well going on see what I don't know though is if this is the correct chip it looks like the bottom end of the data is empty though. So the last data is here, 18F0 or thereabouts. So it looks kind of promising. Don't have any sensible language in here. Nothing I can see. So I'm going to store this and then I'll read a different chip version and see if it changes anything in case there's any difference between the chips. But I imagine they're just different speeds or something like that. So, right, I'm going to save this. Now, I always save files in multiple formats. So I'm going to save it again as another file. Just in case there's an issue with that particular file or something like that, and it can't, um, it can't be read by something else. I always do it as bin and hex. So that's saved as those. Let's try a different chip. So I just chose like one is 170s or something. It was that one there, I think I chose. So I might choose a different one. Let's try... 200. Y 200. We'll do another read. So 18 F wasn't it was the last data we saw. So yes, looks basically the same. Let's do an 85. AB 85. Let's see what that one is. We'll do a read again. It appears the same so far. So 18 was the last data up here. Yeah, it's all the same. No problems there. We're going to the same address range. So I'm pretty confident that data will be okay on a random device. So with that one there, no difference. So that's good. It worked.
So that's good, that was successful. I was able to read that to Dallas non volata memory. And I can uh, send that file back to the person which owns that thing. I don't know if they've got a way of actually programming the new one or whether they want to send me a new device to program the new one with. I don't know. So don't forget to like, click subscribe and the bell. Thumbs up if you like the video. And well, it's just the same as clicking like, you know, it's the same thing. And I'll catch you next one. Bye. Stop. There we go. Stop turns it on. How's that? That's the one amp and it's dropped down to four volts. Hmm. I'm pretty sure these are advertisers being two amp capable. So that's a bit curious. So I'm going to go up here. And a milliamps. No, no, now it's behaving. Interesting. Oh, it's just when it's above one amp. So that's interesting. It's an interesting behaviour. Yeah, once it goes above an amp, it latches up. Hmm, curious. Let's try the other unit now. They should be the same, but you never know. Might be a different behaviour. That's working fine. One amp. There you go, 1.01. It drops down to four. And shuts down. So I went back and checked the listings, and yep, they're definitely both listed at 2.1 amp capable. It's fine, but I got 2.1 amps thinking it'd be a bit of headroom or it's not over distressed, but if it struggles to do 1 amp, yeah, and it's two ports, so you know, you're potentially putting twice as much strain on this, you know, so hmm, they were cheap. Oh, what was it $5 New Zealand? Something like I think it was, it was not much at all. They're pretty cheap, so yeah, because then you got a readout as well.